Well, D have only gone and cooked well once again, but this time the gaff was on the menu. In the Jade of Shadows update, the gaff got her first ever augment, and boy, what a way to kick things off. Grey Spirit Form is now instantly activated on cast, giving her and any weapon she has equipped in her hands a way to apply her Doom debuff onto enemies as you continue running and gunning. This basically means that during this ability cast, she's literally invulnerable, debuffing and adding a huge huge amount of critical damage, making her mow down enemies. Katoro 7490, Zed Master 7500, zero turn mower. Yeah, she's nuts. As always guys, timestamps are added within the video. Passive. The Gaff has a 35% chance to proc a 300% bonus to any health or energy orbs she picks up. Pair that with an Equilibrium or even Violet Archon Shards and you're already off to a great start. Gaff's first ability is Weird Scythes. When cast, the Gaff surrounds herself with her Scythes, in which will seek out enemies dealing viral damage with guaranteed viral procs. Now, these Scythes also synergize with her second ability, spreading and extending the duration of her Doom. Gaff's second ability is Doom. The Gaff condemns enemies within a 40 degree angle in front of her to their Doom. During this debuff time, any damage instances dealt to the enemy will be revisited with a weird scythe above their heads. After two seconds, or by taking enough damage to be considered a lethal finish, the scythe will proc and all that stored damage hits the target. This can work in great synergy to nuke a lot of things very quickly. The gas third ability is Grave Spirit. When activating this ability, Grave Spirit gives the Gaff a 50% critical damage increase to all her equipped weaponry. And this effect is doubled if the enemy is suffering from the Doom debuff. Now the ability remains on the Gaff indefinitely until she escapes from a fatal blow, turning her spectral and providing her with a 100% dodge chance to any sources of damage, making her invulnerable for 10 seconds. But after that duration expires, she has a 25 second cooldown before she can recast the ability again. And then finally, we've got the Gaff's fourth ability, which is Rakali's Cavalry. The Gaff summons her phantom capes at her side, charging in a front V-line formation, dealing big viral damage to any enemies in the way. And since these horses are in their own spectral form, they can phase through terrain, making them great quality of life. Furthermore, the case can also strip enemy defenses if they are marked by Doom's debuff, making this ability even stronger for nuke and potential. Alrighty, now that her kit has been briefly explained, let's cover this new augment and how it changes her third ability. Spectral Spirit, when equipped, will now instantly make the Gaff enter her spectral form right off the rip rather than waiting for it to be propped. This means that you manually control the 100% dodge chance at your command. Additional to that, she can now also apply Doom to enemies with just her weaponry debuffing them and applying critical damage buffs is pretty insane in synergy that requires practically little to no effort. Without the augment, you would have to wait the 25 seconds cooldown before you can cast the ability again. Well, once your Grey Spirit has expired, any kills with the augment will decrease the cooldown by one second. This, in combination with her fourth, is really easy to get the ability back quick again, especially in solo endurance missions where being outnumbered actually works in your favor. Okay, okay, Clark, enough yapping. How are we building her then? Now it's to note, it does require an active playstyle and there are moments of your build technically being on cooldown, so please go and keep this in mind. However, all of that disappointing feeling can easily disappear the moment you re-enter your spectral form. Duration is going to be key here. You see, Grey Spirit has an innate 10 second timer that can be scaled with the likes of duration. So ideally, we want to be in the state of invulnerability as as long as we possibly can, so start off focusing this statistic. Strength is then following next, and I cannot express enough that you barely need much of this because enemies are already being deleted and most of the damage can come from your weaponry. But hey, the more the merrier. Just don't overkill it and try to give attention to your quality of life areas. Up next, we got range, and this isn't really important for the build that I'm running. 
You see, this is going to be a selfish playstyle, focusing all buffs on yourself, whilst also realizing that none of the damage abilities in this build require a lot of range. So we can afford to go and keep this stat nice and low to bump up our other stats instead. And then finally, we got efficiency. And I do usually say in my videos that this stat is a bit selective and limited due to whatever the user has available to them. And although I still agree with that, I would argue against it for this specific build. You see, due to the gas passive increasing energy and health orbs, it makes far more sense to lower her efficiency levels with a blind rage mod to benefit more with your strength. Then slap it on the equilibrium, which will easily cover your energy return so fast due to the synergy it has with her third ability. You see, when you're in spectral form, all enemies killed drop health orbs and enough of those with the 35% passive proc or to give you enough healthy returns so you don't really have to sweat energy. With high duration, you also won't need to be super spammy with your abilities, easily retaining most of the energy that you gathered along the way. And then you go ahead and finally slap in a prime flow to give yourself as much maximum energy storage as possible. You see, it all comes together, sweet as a nut. From there, Spectral Spirit is the focus on the build. So go ahead and whack that augment straight in. For her exciter slot, I would personally prefer to use the preparation mod for this build, but because I have other builds already with her, I couldn't quite fit this in, however. Otherwise, any of these other mods you can go and use here, they all work in synergy to what we're doing. So slot in whatever you have and whichever that you prefer. We can go ahead and pop in the combat discipline mod for whenever we are in spectral form, we dodge 100% of any damage sources, meaning that we can proc this aura mod, which then has a 45% chance to proc our arcane avenger which overall synergizes with a critical build. It's just a cheeky method to take, but if you don't have this option, then slot in whatever aura mod you prefer and whatever one you have. And before this augment was in mind, we needed her second ability to apply doom to enemies. However, now that we have this augment, we can go and subsume that ability option out and pop in a helmet substitute for an ability that helps our weapon damage output. Now for myself, I slotted in Rhino's Raw, increasing our weapon damage, yes, but also increasing the damage our fourth cavalry does as well. So it sinks and fits pretty well as a solid helm of choice here. Other options you can subsume and infuse are on the screen. Any of these also work well, but I would note that Nourish isn't really required for the energy side of things. No, no, it's more for the viral status that it can apply to your weaponry when running a gun in. As for her arcanes, it's going to be solely focused on either duration, strength, weapon damage, or even like weapon utility. We want to focus solely on chasing enemies down and making them regret spawning in that mission. So any of these choices on screen work fantastic. Archon shards. So the main point of the build is to have less ability rotations due to high timers and trying to remain in our spectral spirit form as long as we can. So then as many crimson shards for the increased ability duration they offer will be the perfect start to slot in those in. I would say three or four of them would be great. Now I would highly recommend either one Tal Forged Amber Shard or two Amber Shards for car speed. Animation times are still important, but if you're keeping her fourth in this build, then you're definitely going to be wanting some car speed because it's miserable without it. In my build, I have two times emerald shards. This was allowed the build room to scale against armored enemies, but it's not 100% a necessity. See, with the recent changes to enemy armor scaling, enemies seem easier in base steel path content, not meaning that you'll have to armor strip them just to deal with them quickly anymore. But if you do plan on staying longer in your missions, then these shards are always an option by all means because it synergizes fantastically. You don't really have to focus on it happening. It's like a passive. On screen are some other options that you can alternate with. As I always strongly mention, absolutely none of these shards are required to make your build work. They are all quality of life for you to enjoy your build further. Please go and keep that in mind. Weapon choices. So there are quite a few weapons to select, but I will go and put my favorite one that I was using on screen for now. The dual toxicist in Karnan is a monster when paired with the gaff for this build. It's great for ad clearing, but it also melts single target enemies. Additionally, if you can throw in the new arcane secondary fortifier, you can protect yourself with overguard whenever you exit your spectral form. This is leaving her so much room for error. It's actually insane how much survivability she has whilst also having outrageous outgoing damage. Ability rotations. 
as always, whenever you get into a mission, gather energy. Now, there are plenty of ways to go ahead and do this. If you have the preparation mod slotted in, then you're already good. But so long as you have enough energy to cast your third ability, Grave Spirit, then any kills from here onwards are giving you plenty of health orb drops to convert your energy with your equilibrium mod. Easy peasy. So with that in mind, you've entered your spectral form. Follow up with your Helm Inf Infused ability to continue buffing weapon damage output and, well, that's pretty much it. Now go shoot and loot until your spirit timer runs out. And this is the point to be careful. At the beginning of certain missions or playing within a team, it could lead you to be a little more exposed right at this very point. Now the secondary fortifier arcane that we slotted in will require a few Eximus unit kills before really snowballing your protection outside of your spirit form. So this is the part that you need to go and focus on a little. From here, begin using your fourth ability, Cavalry. It's going to give yourself iframes, making you immune to incoming damage. Whilst also sending those out, it's going to kill certain enemies in front of you, helping with your cooldown timer for your augment to be lowered. This exact rotation here, where you could be vulnerable, will require you to play around what other survival options you have, such as positioning, entering your operator, hiding around corners, lovely jubbly. Don't go diving in head first without backup. However, if all is cycled correctly and you're following the build, you will flow into quite a machine of destruction. Thank you guys for watching today's video. A friendly reminder that if you did enjoy, please leave a like to support or share the video with a friend to go and help the views. If you're new to the channel, come subscribe. But as always, I'll be catching you guys again in the next video.